Hi, Stuart Mann here, and in this video we're looking at the minor pentatonic scale cage shape 2 over a major chord. So, here is the A minor pentatonic scale cage shape 2. As usual, I'll put a link to this scale shape down in the notes below. And the chord we're going to play over is A major, so A minor pentatonic over A major. And as we've said in previous videos, it's extremely useful to be able to visualize the chord that you're playing over. Now, the A major chord that I would instinctively want to play would be this. But that's not very helpful to me because my minor pentatonic shape is here. So I need to visualize not K shape 1, which is this, A major. I need A major, K shape 2, which is this. So that's the one that looks like the open D chord. Um, if you look at that chord and then play through the minor pentatonic scale, you'll see there's a disagreement as with shape one. This note, which is the happy sounding third, again, don't worry if you don't know what third is yet, that is clashed with by this note in the scale, which is the flat third. So just like with shape one, uh, we're not saying it's a bad thing, it's just a musical effect to create tension by hitting this note. Um, quick demonstration of using it in phrases. Okay, um, again, as with shape one, we can bend this note a little bit towards the third of this major chord and that gives you a very nice authentic bluesy sound it's known as a blues curl quick demonstration of that and again this same note here appears elsewhere in the scale. It appears here, because that's an E string as well, and here. So, uh, try to memorize the positions of these three flat thirds, these tension notes, and try to use them all in the same way. Each of them can be bent or unbent. So those are your three flat three notes. Um, we've highlighted the fact that they create tension when played over a major chord. You can see visually why with regard to this note. And you now know the locations of the other three. As usual, get in your practice regime. Practice it lots and lots. Try to think about what makes for a good uh, listening experience for the listener. It's not constant tension and it's probably not complete absence of tension. Some rise and fall of tension in your solo is probably a good approach to take. I found a video, <laughs> hope you found the video useful. As usual, please give it a thumbs up if you did and click subscribe so I can send you another one. See you in the next video.